Okay, good morning. Let's talk, uh, let's talk edge pieces here. Uh, I don't, I've never made a video like this because I've never actually used this type of edging. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about how this works and how you'd want to set up your Swiss tracks uh, if you were going to do this on, uh, in your garage. And so this garage is a little bit unique in that I've got a door here and then a door on the side. And so to set up the flooring, I need to start on this door but to take into consideration that I wanted a full tile over on that side of the, of the garage on the left side. But what, what we have here is a pretty aggressive transition. We probably have a four inch drop and only a 12 inch section here. And so you'll notice that the flooring is poking up a little bit here. So it really needs to sit flush which there's not really any way to do this. You try to glue plastic or epoxy plastic to, you know, to, to the floor is just not practical. Uh, and so this, this aggressive transition, even if I could, uh, is another three quarter inch move upward. You know, my lowered car is gonna have a hard time getting in here. Uh, and so this is something I've been thinking about doing for a long time, I've just never done it, but this is called the uh, tread wear. I'm not sure who makes this for Swiss tracks, but, but somebody does, some flooring company. Uh, but you can see the only disadvantage of this, this is basically diamond plate that's uh, rhino lined, if you will. Uh, and so what this is going to allow me to do, notice it's a lot longer, so it's a lot, or I guess, bigger than my, my normal transition, right? So this is only, what, three inches, and this is going to be five inches. So this will allow me to carry a little bit less aggressive of a you know upward movement to the floor so I get a little bit more angle out of it and uh, if you watch the Swiss tracks install video we actually tested this we brought some lowered cars up and brought it in here to see see if it would fit and so today I'm going to show you how to install this or how I installed this I don't know if it's how to but this is how I installed this uh, and uh, and we're going to set it up so that way I can finish this here. This solves my problem of this aggressive transition and the uh, edge pieces sticking up. And in order to make this as sturdy as possible, I'm going to leave the edge pieces in place. You know, because you could just bring it up over the floor. Uh, but I don't want that aggressive of a transition if I can help it. And so we set the floor up with this in mind that we're going to set it up this way. Uh, and so I'll show you how to do this. We're going to drill through it and then we're going to tap con or I'm sorry, a concrete uh, drill into the concrete. And then we're going to put in some expansion, uh, hammered in expansion anchors. And I learned a few lessons on the other doorway uh, that hopefully I'll avoid here on this one. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is grab my tape. I want to find the center. Two of these is not long enough to carry the whole whole uh, distance of the, of the door. So I think this is a 12 foot door. I just want to center up my center this treadwear up at six feet here. Let's just see if this matches up. That way I'm cutting equal distance on each side, or roughly equal distance on each side. So that should be our center right there. Okay, so now I want to carry this right on the edge of where the edge piece meets the meets this Swiss tracks tile. So Swiss tracks has loops and pegs, right? A looped side and a peg side. And so our edge pieces, we always want to start with looped edge pieces uh, because then if you think about this logically, so if I have the tile sitting on the ground here like this, and if I do looped, that means, so if I do looped edge pieces, that means the pegs are gonna snap in place and then my loops are here and then I set into my loops. Otherwise, I would have to, if it was the opposite way, I'd have to lift up and try to tuck my pegs underneath. So I wanna go looped edge pieces so that I can just set my peg tiles and go pegged all the way from, from you know, front, from the door all the way to the back. Okay, so let's start here in the center and work our way out. Okay, so I did the other door yesterday and the lesson I learned is that if I pound this in, 
So if I really hammer it down, then I get some waviness. Right? So this will tend to, you know, tend to kind of push and torque down too much. Uh, and so I want to pound it in these these sleeved to expandable anchors. I guess these aren't sleeved, but this is a an expandable anchor. You can see how this works. But if I start to hammer it in too, too hard, then this will sit lower than the section that doesn't have a have a nail. Uh, and so we're going to set these up. I got the marker. So I'm going to set this up and do half inch plus a little bit. So we're going to do this would be five eighths. This is where I'm going to set up my line. Now, because this is goofy diamond plate, the other lesson I learned is if you try to if you try to drill a hole, a quarter inch hole, on the on the diamond plate area, it doesn't work. So you need to find a spot in between. So I'm going to set the depth of this. I want it to be just over the edge of the edge piece. That's the way I want it, I think, right there. And now I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole at 5 eighths off the edge. You got to hold on to this because once it starts to go, once it goes through there, here and grabs the Swiss track, it might not stay straight. See, it wants the pull. So there's that. Now, because this is going to be really loud, I'm going to put some ear protection on because it hurts my brain. Grab the vacuum. Now I take my take my concrete anchor, slide it in place, make sure I still have this straight, and then I'm going to take and hammer this in. This is where I want to try to avoid really jacking this thing up, so I'm going to try this. Yeah, that's a better way to do it. So what I was doing before was just hammering the crap out of it. So now it, it's not denting my thing as much. All right, so let's do the other end. So we lock it in place. This is really wanting to pull out, but I want it to be, yeah, I want it to sit straight. So I'm gonna have to really work on this here. By the way, that's how you clean Swiss tracks. I've really got to figure out, I mean, uh, clearly I'm not explaining this properly. 
about how this flooring works because the no matter, no matter who I talk to, every single person, their, their first comment is, well, what about the dirt? Doesn't it bother you about the dirt? But again, that's the magic of this stuff is the dirt disappears. So we'll lock this down so now it's now it's in position and it'll lock down as we as we work our way from edge to edge. So in order to make this somewhat symmetrical so it doesn't look terrible, because you can see those lines or those anchors. The longer term question is are these gonna pull up over time? I thought about putting some sort of epoxy anchor, a concrete epoxy, but we're going to just roll with it this way. So again, I'm going 5 8 in at 12 and 24, which is really hard to see with a black marker. So as I was saying, I'm not sure what to tell you that'll make you feel better about all this, all this dirt and all this dust that I just made just sucks right out. But the beauty of it is I could leave that dirt there until I feel like it. Until I feel like cleaning it up. So it looks clean all the time. But clearly whatever I'm saying to people isn't, isn't resonating. Because that's the most common question. You can see how kind of flimsy it was until, yeah, I think just driving over it a few times is going to pull it back down. Crap. I liked it better. I should have kept the edge. I shouldn't have pulled it up so far. It'll be all right, I hope. And doing it this way is just so that I don't dent it all up. See how solid that is? All right, so I'm gonna do 12, 24, and I'll do a shoot the gap. So it'll be 22 in between. And so I'll do it 11, so 11 inches, and that'll give me a center mark on this piece. So these anchors are a quarter inch by two inches. Now the only problem with doing this is that if I make some sort of uh, jack up any of these tiles, it's gonna be hard to pull it up. That's gonna be considerably harder than it was before. Fix, fix an individual tile. That's why I probably shouldn't have pulled it so far up over the lip here, but I think we're gonna be okay. There we go. Okay. You can hear how stout it is once that, once that grabs, it's pretty sweet. go. So now you can see it's pretty stout. I don't think those are going to pull up at all when I'm driving on it. So I'm going to do the same thing on this other piece here. I'll come back to you and show you how we cut the edge pieces then. Let me just get you a close-up shot of this piece here going in. 
Let's see how, how we're doing this. You know, we've got to choose a side here because we've got the diamond plate issue. Let's go on this side of it. Shoot. really lean into this to find it goes a lot quicker. Concrete, and these are both quarter inch. I'm probably going deeper than I need to, but I don't want to mistakenly go too shallow and then I can't get the thing out. Slide it in, make sure we're straight. You could still move it a little bit if you had to, but. Yeah, if you got any ideas how I can teach people that the beauty, the best part of this flooring, like there's many shortcomings to all flooring types, but the best, best part of this is the fact that it always looks clean, even when it's not. I'd rather do getting ahead of myself doing so many holes. I don't want to do too many and have it not line up. I'm going to be putting this stuff all over the place. Feeling really good about getting projects done here at HQ. Just really pull it all together. Now they send this with a package of these, the treadwear, but I bought more of them at Home Depot. Because I'm gonna do this over on the other side of the building as well on some of the entry areas. So if you're coming here for the first time to Obsessed Garage and you're watching this and you want to honor the source, I would uh, really appreciate it. We do sell this flooring. My everyday pricing on this is 20% uh, off MSRP and then I eat the cost of shipping which is substantial. So let's see how many of these I'm going to use. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 14, 15, 16 is what you'll need for a 12 foot door. Pretty solid. I think that's gonna do the trick. Yeah. So I think it'll kind of pull a little bit into place as well. Man, you can see how aggressive that transition is. If you can see it from this angle, it's a solid four inches or so from sidewalk to in. All right, so let's cut the, cut the edge pieces now. This is gonna need to be two and a half inches. And so two and a half, and then I'll notch it out. All right, so I got cut off wheel and I need this to be two and a half inches. I really need like a silver marker or something so I can actually see this better. Just take my square.
sure you could get cut this with any kind of circular saw or jigsaw or something, but I'm using the cutoff wheel. Okay, there's our piece. I'm gonna go make a mark where I need to cut it or notch it. And I just need a little notch. It's really hot. So I just did that. Now we just do the same thing here. We drill it out, hammer it in, and I'll hammer, get a little bit better fit here when we, I'll kind of knock it into place here. So that's the way I want it right there. Shoot. Slid. I knew that would happen. I can get the concrete bit in there. There we go. Not bad. I'll have to work it a little bit. There we go. There's our edge piece. We'll do the same thing the other side, and we're done. All right, let's put this last one in here, and we'll call this one done. The only potential gripe that you could have is notice if you look at it, as you pan across, you can kind of see the lumpiness a little bit as you look from screw to screw. That's why I didn't hammer it in so hard. So the nice thing is that hopefully this will protect our floors from getting grabbed from the forklift coming in. Obviously cars getting in and out. Now I won't have the edge piece poking up and uh, we got ourselves a solution. Yeah, I did a much better job on this side. There's no, I don't see any sunlight leaks. So using that punch or the, uh, whatever you call it, the little chisel is a better way to, to do it then. This is the first one I did. I learned a lesson. And so you can see, actually I gotta pull it down a little bit, but there's some air gaps on this one. I can get some more, get a little more stout weather stripping, but this one has some, has some gaps. See right in the center there, you can see the sunlight, because I really hammered those two pieces down. And so that portion part there, I guess it's not too bad other than that center section. And maybe over there on the extreme right, there's a little bit of sunlight. Okay, here's some bonus footage for you. This is a little bit more classic of an example. So the doorway, notice you can see the difference in depth. You know, the doorway 
is recessed quite a bit more than the entry of the man door here. So what I did was I just kind of pressure fit and cut some edge pieces because you can't clip to anything. So I, cu I cut the little, little uh, what do we call them, the loops off and then just kind of butted this up in here. You can see I tried to use some epoxy. That doesn't really stick very well to plastic. I tried to use a couple of different things to try to make this work. And uh, same thing would happen here if you had, let's say you had two garage doors and one was, was inset, right? And so one was further in than the other, you, could, you would run into a problem just like we have here. So the solution is to use treadwear, right? So again, I don't think you really need these edge pieces. You could just put this on. I like to have the edge piece here. I think it makes sense to keep this from flexing. And so I actually cut these back about two inches. So now I can take my piece and put it in place here. Let's see how far up I can come and still close the door. Yeah, that'll work. I don't know if I can close the door if it's that far out. Yeah, so it has to come in a little bit here, right to about there. And now we'll have a solid edge solution here. And I only have three left, so I'm gonna have to make do. The door's roughly 35, so 17 and a half is the center. So again, if you have a third bay or a second garage bay that's not on the same plane as your main bay, this is how you would solve this problem. These are pretty stout, so I think three of them should be fine on this little piece here. In the hole. Put it in the edge. Wow, what a great solution, man. Way better. Look at that. Now, no one's tripping. No, those pieces aren't popping out anymore. This is, a, this is a really high traffic area. That's great. Look at that. That's awesome. So that's a wrap. Uh, if you're watching this video uh, now, I'm honestly not sure the pricing. So uh, we'll put a link in the description here once we have it up, uh, but we can order this from Swiss Tracks for you. Uh, so just hit up, uh, hit up Matt at ObsessedGarage.com or Kyle at ObsessedGarage.com and we'll source it for you, get your pricing on it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And uh, again, if you need Swiss Tracks flooring, let me know. But uh, yeah, this, this is great. Love this solution. Thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. Catch you on the next one.